Okay, the pan's been up there about five minutes now. Should be nice and preheated. That off of there. Couple more minutes, those should be ready. By the way, the stand's adjustable, so you can set it at a much lower height if you want to. Just lower the legs of the tripod accordingly. Four hundred and fifty-six watts theoretical on a two and a half foot dish, and the usable power is about three hundred and thirty to three hundred sixty. Here's just a quick shot of my last two videos. A 36 inch model, that's the original, and a 40 inch unit. This 36 inch model was the first one that I made of the three. Super awesome, based on an old commercial unit that used to be sold. They stopped selling it back in 2011, and the thing worked totally awesome, so I decided to make a DIY of it. So that worked out awesome. Then I wanted to make like a family size unit for the bigger pans and the thicker, thicker cast iron and stuff. So I went with a 40 inch unit. Those two units cook in the medium to medium high range typically year round. Awesome, check that out. Perfect. Awesome. It's working totally cool. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of those two. Just pause the video for easy reading. All right, now let me jump into the build. It's a quick three to four minute build. We'll start with the substructure. All right, to make the unit, you start with the backing. I chose just to use a large box from Home Depot. From there I just glued it together and added a little half inch PVC pipe about three quarter inch long. Glued it in with construction adhesive. Those are 32 lines for the 32 fins. Then to brace the fins we'll use these 3 8 inch square wood dowels, four 36 inch long ones. And we'll cut them down into two inch sections. To cut the fins you make a pattern piece using what they call the pin and string method. I'll show you more in detail how I did that later, but basically this is the deal. It's 3 quarter inch on the front end, about 2 and 5 eighths on the back end, and it's 15 inch long fin. So of course together makes the 30 inch dish. Two and a half feet. Remember to cut off about a half an inch off the front of each fin, so it fits right inside the 30 inch circle. That's of course to compensate for the pipe in the middle. From here we just do the hardware, the mounting hardware. It's a square piece on the back and a bolt that goes through with a round piece on the front. To do that, you just use construction adhesive. This time I'm using the Gorilla construction adhesive. Then the same with the back. Take the back piece, drill a hole in the center, flip over the collector, and drop it on with the construction adhesive. Then from there, just grab the bolt and the mounting plate and put that on the back and drop the bolt through. Then drop a washer on and finally the nut, or in my case I'm using a toggle bolt with a toggle wing. That works great.
Then we'll drop on the poster board. It's just the standard 22 by 28 inch poster board heavyweight. Put the shiny side up. You put the glue on like that on three of them and then slap it down and go around. It's best to cover two sections at a time like that and go around in a circle. Skip the sections like that, go around and glue them down and then we'll do the second set. The second set is done like that. A bead on the front and then two on the back side. Again, make sure you glue it so the shiny side is up. Like that. Then finally just grab the mirror stickers, use a couple of pattern pieces like this, and start with the triangles. Cut out your triangles, you'll need 14 total. Drop the first seven on like that, the second seven on like that, and then go around the outside with the 4x12s, about nine of them, give or take. Totally done. Then just bring it outside and drop it on the tripod and we'll point it up at the stand. Nice sunny day. By the way, you can get eight triangles out of one piece of poster board, so all you technically need is two pieces, but I'd buy like three at least, just in case you make a mistake. This, by the way, is the smallest size dish that you should make for any kind of serious cooking if you want to cook year round. It does the trick as long as you use the six to eight inch pans, but nothing bigger. And make sure you use, if you're using cast iron, use the thin cast iron on this. That is very impressive for December 10th with the smallest collector. Okay, that's basically it for the vid. Thanks for watching. The last two things are just to talk through on the pot stand on how to build a pot stand. And then after that, I go into kind of a rambling explanation on how to draw a parabolic curve using the pin and string method. All right, let me give you a quick rundown of the stand so you know how to build it. Starting with the burner grate, that just fits in there. This is grooved and it's got the little edge pieces right there. I think the ring itself is six and a half, but then from end to end, it's like eight and seven, eight inches. So it fits right in perfectly to these burner grates. You just set it right in the groove all the way around. Plenty of room, plenty of play, gravity holds it in there and it won't move. It's never fallen out and I'm pretty rough with it. it. Just sort of sits in there. So that works out good. This is 89055, four bolt, flower pot ring, Panacea flower pot ring. And uh, I can't remember the model number on this one. It's really long, but I'll put it in the description section and in the video itself. So you just bolt this onto this little two by three block of wood, four inches long. And then you just use a tube strap, three quarter inch tube strap around there with these big fat screws that go almost all the way in. So tighten those as much as you possibly can. And two of them usually works, but if you want to add another one, there's definitely room. So you got that. Then it's just these concrete form stakes, these steel concrete form stakes with the holes every three inches or so. Pretty popular item. You can get them at Home Depot and Lowe's in all lengths. But go with the two 36 inch ones and then you can bolt it right here with those bolts we talked about. Overlap it about a foot. I just put it down in the ground six inches. That's all that this stand needs to hold. You know, I can really push on that good and it never moves. It'll shake a little bit like that, but it never falls forward. So it's good. So if you don't have the hard soil, maybe just throw a cinder block or two in front of it. That's one idea. Or a five-gallon bucket full of sand or just something like that, you know, a couple of sandbags. Just some so it can't pull forward. Or you could rope it back with like tent rope and some stakes, kind of with the tensioners and pull it back if you do it here, and it won't hit the focal point. If you're afraid about the wood and the focal point, I've never had a problem, honestly, but if you're worried about that, just wrap it in some heavy-duty tin foil. Then the, the light will just uh, reflect off. Shouldn't be a problem at all. And uh, I guess that's about it. I'll put all the details again in the, uh, the deal, and that's cool. Oh, another way you could do it is just quick creep, by the way. You could put some quick creep in the ground or, you know, something like that. You could also, even if you want to make a portable, get a five gallon bucket, fill that with third or half full of quick creep, and put that in. Then, you, then it's actually portable. You could move it around. 
To get this in the ground, I just use a hammer, by the way. I just bang on that with a regular standard hammer. About 200 times to get it in six inches. That's how hard the soil is out here. So, pretty cool. It works out good. Really neat. Oh, one more thing. Remember, this thing is adjustable, so if this seems too high for you, don't let that stop you, because you can put this thing like a whole foot down about here, and then it's just about the height of your kitchen stove burner. It might be an inch or two higher, but it's right in the range, so it looks about the same, feels about the same, and then you just have to lower the uh, legs to their lowest setting on the tripod, and it still works out. Since it's just a three-foot dish, you can still angle it all the way without the edge hitting the ground or anything. You'll have clearance at two or three inches, even at the lowest level, so it works out really good. Okay, here's the deal on cutting the fin. So what we want to do is you got your tube right there with a piece of twine, make two little loops here so we can slide these back and forth. Then what you want to do is set up a cardboard structure like this. And first thing I did was the fin's going to be right here along here, the pattern piece. So what you want to do is measure over from here to here the 15 inches and up three quarters of an inch because that's where the end of the fin's going to be. And then on this side, I'm not sure how high it's going to be, but that doesn't matter. What we do from here, that's called the vertex of the fin, the lowest part of the dish. And what we do is we pick our focal distance. So I'm going to go 36 inches. That's exactly to here. So these are our, quote, pins. I like to use screws because they're a little tougher than the pins. So put a screw at the vertex and at the focal point. We're going to go 36 inches. And then again, make sure we're measuring over the 15 inches for the length of the fin here and here and make sure it's all straight and even. Then what you want to do is take a piece of twine or non-stretchable material, maybe fishing line, and go down and up so that when this is taut like this, it wraps right around here. Now, it looks like it doesn't, but if I put a pencil in there and bring this to a point, it goes right around the screw right there, just like this. So make sure that's the case. It goes right up there over that, over the pin or the screw up to there, and then weight down where you have the pole like that so it doesn't move. So that's the deal. Now what we do is we wrap this end around like this and we draw this over to the side. So we start by moving this one here. That one really doesn't move. And we make sure it stays wrapped around there like that. And then we take a pencil and we put it in here like so and stretch it out. So just like that is where the fat part of the fin or the edge part of the fin is going to be. That was an initial mark, but actually it goes right there. Then we just put a pencil in there and we move it along like this, keeping this piece of string straight. So we're sliding that over as we're sliding this over. So this string stays completely straight. And this will slide, the pencil will slide and match the vertex pin right there and we just slide this back and forth like that keeping this string straight and that'll give us our exact pattern piece it'll draw a pencil line from here to here and give us the exact curve that we need